Yeah, watch out for these crazy kids with powers. We're better than you and we'll take you down to prove it! How do you, like, do parenting oh. in this world where bring it kids on. can literally destroy Let's you? Let's have a proper fight! And that's when Bakugo <laughs> realized he, he messed up. This guy's got, like, Bowser Ball bullets. A dust cloud. My sinuses are acting up just watching this. And flowers, too. <laughs> Go tug tank. This is... This, this is an awesome class of kids in terms of powers. This guy's Blastoise. Is this setting up for a My Hero Academia sequel? <laughs> Planting the seeds for after the show is finished and Deku and Friends' legacy has, has been fully lived. Why do I feel like there's actually a good chance that that happens? Deku comes back as like an All Might figure while on the side being part of the, the Super League, the Justice League of heroes that I feel like is undoubtedly going to form. Invisible Girl comes back as the janitor. It's a barrel of laughs. Uh, what? Kids these days are stupid strong. This poor teacher <laughs> at the end of her rope. Having this much power when you're just a tie should be illegal! There's an escalation of powers. Explain. This is the plot the of City of God, pass, the movie, the Brazilian movie. Combine and become more powerful. Is that how it works? That's insane. Ooh, this opens up a really weird can of worms in the future. Doomsday. That's what they call this theory. Singularity Doomsday. It's like the opposite of idiocracy in some ways. People just get better and better. King Orca, is this okay? But it's not about the powers, okay. it's about what you have on the inside. Why would you ask? Right? Do you think I'm not paying attention? That this was unexpected, not the outcome I planned for from the very beginning? I no, dare you have so little faith in Gang Orca, the most powerful of all Orcas. They may be failures, but they can handle themselves. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity. Ah, uh, <laughs> Hokure's evening wings. I don't know. The wings of the evening of Hokure. Yes, let's move on. I feel like she's she has heroism material. Wow, you've got such a beautiful <laughs> face, dear. He really turned it on. Sorry, hun. Uh oh. That killed me, Glamoroki. Seriously, I might die. Oh, I don't know. Was it really all that funny? It's good to see Baku actually laughing. But I outshine adults at everything: piano, fighting. <laughs> God, like a piano was the first I'm a one. Prodigy. Good for you. These kinds of kids have all sorts of trouble when they grow up. We'll show you that we can use our powers better than you ever even imagined! Just watch! Well, at least he's ambitious. There you go. Turn it on, and Bison. You kids are amazing, I'll give you that. Thing is, there's more to hero Don't weigh very much. Power. That's what Here I said. I it's all about what's in your heart. This is actually a really interesting quirk now that I'm seeing that it's more powerful than just shape-shifting. It's sort of uh, like, what do you call it? Mysterio in Spider-Man. You can imagine the limits of this just being her own her own creativity. This is an incredibly powerful illusion. <laughs> Tammy's looking great in this, this scene. Oh, what? I didn't know these guys could do this! Yeah, neither did I. I'm with the kids. <laughs> it's awesome. All we gotta do is show these brats how impressive we are. Cause come on, lose to someone you look down on and you feel like crap. That's not the way we're gonna win the Right, they can't, there's no win, winning. Losing to the kids would be the absolute worst. I mean, you never, ever live that down for the rest of your life. That's the kind of thing that haunts you. But then, on the other hand, beating up children does not feel great. <laughs> At least you hope. I mean, maybe beating up that one kid would be would be fun and feel good, but for the most part, they're just kids and, you know, you beat them up and then what? It's like, good job, I guess. You beat up a bunch of kids. So there's no way to win in a direct fight unless it's not about the, the battle itself. It's just true more generally. I feel like that's one of the big, big issues of conflict is losing just feels awful, but winning also doesn't always feel great. A lot of times with arguments, for example, I'll win an argument, but then feel terrible about myself because either I've gone too far and compromised something that I care about or I've perhaps like, like maybe be dishonest or stretch the truth in some of my points, or I've created a negative emotion between myself and the other person. And it's like, man, I really, really missed the important thing here, which is not the argument itself. It was my relationship with this other person. It feels really tough to find that balance sometimes, especially if you're somewhat of an agreeable person, because you don't want to be weak, right? You want to stand up for yourself and you want to be able to fight when you need to, but it's hard to fight efficiently without risking going too far and being able to draw blood. It's very difficult to find that line. And maybe that's part of what this exercise is designed to do, to test their ability to take on a challenge while also showing discretion. It does end up being a surprisingly deep exercise. It's not just babysitting. We have to set them on the right path. Otherwise, they'll end up causing problems. Like there's a flash of the deck same there. way I did during the provisional exam. I don't want them to go down that same path. <laughs> He's talking like he went all the way down a villainous path or something like that. We'd make bad heroes. This has come full circle. This relationship. Get in Bakugo there and have on the some leader. fun. <laughs> you're gonna do it. You're gonna love it. Get your hands off of me! You 
you think I'm impressed by this? You're their leader, aren't you, kid? <sighs> if you Play into keep his looking pride. down on everyone else, you'll never be able to see your own weaknesses. Oh my god, that means so much coming from Bakugo. Holy crap. That comes from a deep place. What he said just this is his now. power. Glamour. He wasn't talking down to me, but did he really mean all that? Oh yeah, he did. He's also talking to himself. I can feel how true they are. <laughs> me too, man. Me too. I really, I felt that. For sure. After this, it's your turn, ma'am. Make sure you keep this vibe going. No pressure. I mean, all you gotta do is build this giant ice roller coaster. It's so important to be the strongest. Tell me, Endeavor. I'm sure you have a reason. Let's hear it. I'm very curious as well. I would love to get into the Endeavor's psyche. I love that moment from Bakugo. It was really short. I mean, it's just a sentence, but in classic Bakugo form, it's a, it's a very understated way to show a lot of growth and a lot of reflection. I mean, I think that more than just looking down on others being an obstacle to observing oneself, it's actually a deliberate attempt not to look at one's own flaws, or it stems from an anxiety about one's own flaws or shortcomings. I just think it's a much bigger part of life than we than we realize, you know, our own expectations for ourselves and where we are in that, in that ranking. To adequately meet one's own expectations is an incredible feeling, but to live in a state where we're constantly falling short in certain ways of our own desires and expectations is terrifying. And so in those situations, it's way easier to bring other people down than it is to move up to where we're actually satisfied. And to some extent, I think part of it's based on a lack of faith. Like, I think if we're aiming really high in certain things, there's often an insecurity that it's not even possible. And it can be frustrating to also not see it in others. Like, part of us wants to see others succeed because that adds to the faith that it's possible for ourselves. And so sometimes that manifests as just being extra critical of other people who don't live up to, to our own standards. But the core reason is that we're not living up to our own. But I think the more one actually fulfills their own expectations and does the things they want to do, the easier it is to be understanding and sympathetic of others and where they are. There's sort of an internalization of the responsibility that has to happen. I definitely made this mistake a lot. You know, I think I was extra hard on people who are not living up to the ideals that I had picked out for myself. But the more I was able to feel confident about what I was doing, the more I was able to sort of let go and understand that people are where they are and have their own individual journeys that has no bearing on, on me and that all of that can coexist simultaneously. Ultimately, it's wasted energy. You know, there's nothing anyone else could do. There's nothing that my criticism will ever do to make me feel better about myself. It's sort of just an outlet for that frustration. You'll often find that the, the biggest critics, you know, the biggest haters are people who are the most unsatisfied with what they're doing. People who truly feel comfortable where they are, you know, who have proved things to themselves and who have found a role that they feel good about, have the emotional freedom to want the best for others and want to bring other people up. It ceases to be a competition and more just something of beauty that you want other people to experience. I actually feel like that's going to play into whatever Endeavor has to say as well. You students have so much potential. Uh, Avoid I mean, children. don't you Got dare it. fail! Sir, yes! Little, little slip up there, a little positive slip up. Who loves kids. After what we put together in there, I think we're meant to be friends, don't you? <laughs> this guy's really pushing, pushing the friendship angle so hard. If you would just let it go, it would happen organically. I like this little crew that's forming. The reality is that by attacking you, the League went after a school other than UA. Up until now, our school children had an especially close relationship with each other. Kind of put all that aside. Water under the bridge. Speaking of perspective. But hopefully together we'll get a better idea of what the villains want. Cray cray. Additional. <laughs> Kami. Long time no see. You've changed quite a bit. Not interested. Some things have not changed. I want you to know I'm proud of you, son. I swear I'll become someone you can be proud of too. Whoa. Not just as the number one hero, but as the man that you call father. And never sort of bring it home in terms of what, what matters. <laughs> that was wholly unnecessary, but all right. <laughs> Just so you know, I'll be rooting for you. Can I, can I have an uh, autograph? <laughs> look, at least he's trying, you know what I mean? Sometimes they have to look behind them. But, and Thoruk is listening. Step in front of the other. That's all you can do. They keep moving forward. A lot of huge statements from the characters this episode. First Bakugo and now Endeavor. The fact that he just humbled himself in front of his son. And in front of All Might and all these other people. It's no small thing. As the air outside began to grow colder, we tried to come to terms with everything we'd been through. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> it's too much. It's been like three three weeks since the start of the show. Sir Night Eye's funeral. It was one last chance to say goodbye to him. One last time to dig the knife into my side. As for Aerie... She regained consciousness and recovered, but Can she was still her? emotionally like we... unstable, and her quirk could go out of control at any time. So I guess it's okay to endanger the nurse. She couldn't have visitors. The nurse is there? <laughs> what? The nurse is just disposable? The equation isn't that difficult to solve. Can you imagine going through math class? A teacher has this voice. Mathematics is truly a cursed subject. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it can be tough. Midoriya. Oh, is Deku gunning for the top? 
13! I mean, that's what Deku does, right? Oh, I take it back. What's that Mineta was doing? almost smart! Too bad you screwed up. Thanks, Mineta. <laughs> Speaking of wholly unnecessary. Before we feed our brains, we need to feed our bodies. Mm -hmm. Time I'm for starving. delicious anime food. Please, have some fromage. Does that mean cheese? Oyama was force-feeding me cheese. And little did I know... I think was getting force-fed a lot. Even stranger These things were in my future. Days... Okay. Why don't you come have lunch with us in the cafeteria? I've Ayama is reflecting on his lack of yourself, screen time Ayama. recently. No! Lunch He's entering food doesn't with cheese. With my refined palate. Well, to each their own, I suppose. Uh, that's... Hard to believe. All right, I got to suspend this belief a lot in the show with all the, the you know the quirks and the powers and everything. But this is a little bit too much for me to stomach because have you seen the the food in this school? It's it's literally Mich Michelin eight star cuisine all the time. So that is just a lie. Now time to eat. What's that his was angle? just the beginning. Of what? <laughs> what? Are we entering the Aoyama arc? Why does this take a sinister turn? Little, he was showing his true colors. Little creepy. Is he the spy? <laughs> nah. I brought you this cheese in the middle of the night. That was Oyama, right? But wait, his eyes were closed. How did he know? I'm sure there's a logical cheese. <gasps> I was right. <laughs> Actually, it's Midori, cheese. I know. Cheese. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe that it actually was cheese. I sort of love that, though. But do move your legs as quickly as possible! This is a new arm movement. He just been practicing. You're right. Sorry, class right. How do you explain this? <laughs> no! He's just there, watching you with Surprise. that smile. <laughs> there he was. I was so weirded out by the cheese last night, I couldn't sleep. Did you eat the cheese, though? I don't want to make him feel awkward, especially if it ends up being something personal. Why did you leave a cheese message outside of my window? I feel like it's a valid question. I think they're going by Team Lurkers. I saw it mentioned in the news earlier. There sure are a bunch of heroes teaming up these days! My sexy giant death yeah, is yeah. getting famous! Interesting. I really do feel like this is all leading towards a more unified group of heroes. And bigger hero assemblies. You know, a more coordinated effort. We have teams, but right now it seems to be more like a loose scattering of a small number of people. You can imagine some kind of, like, hero force, although that's not without its dangers, too. Once we are pros, we should do some team-ups, too! Yeah, I feel like there's already an amazing team just sitting here in class 1A. Oh, oh, we'll be called Team Rainy Day! Woohoo! What about us? Don't need you! You can't just look at quirks when you're teaming up. You have to choose people you get along with, too. Ouch, that hurts even worse. Unbreakable! Oh. It's a lot of, like, real practice with this. So you made any progress yet? No, not really. What's the matter, nerd? I thought you were gonna surpass me and be I number one! I don't know, one. did you see the, the thousand god punches that he inflicted on Overhaul? I call that progress. Although we needed Eri for that. That still wasn't enough to beat Chisaki. Uh, what? I need to be able to oh, use without 100% Eri, of one for all without any help. Got it. Watch this. My new move. Why was that so disturbing? You're gonna hurt your tummy like that. Don't know what that means. If I'm going to ask what's up, now's the time. This calls for cheese. <laughs> so we were on my balcony, and then... Cheese. You, yeah, cheese was there. You're like me, Oyama. Oh yeah, he what also destroys himself. About? You think so? If I don't wear it, then sometimes my navel laser just leaks out. I was born that way. I've always thought we were similar. He's been, like, waiting for this all this time. That's why I left the message to raise your spirits. Did it work? Was the cheese delicious? I didn't exactly want to eat it off the ground. That's a huge waste of cheese. If we can't overcome cheese. the things that bring us pain, then you won't be able to twinkle, mon ami. <laughs> quote, quote of the year right there. He just wanted to encourage me. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't anything sinister. And your surprise was a huge success. Thanks, Aoyama. It was definitely interesting. It came out. All right. <laughs> Twinkle, you've been like so cheerful lately. Did Deku just do his laundry? That's the story of how Aoyama and I became friends. 
I've been waiting for Oyama to play a bigger role, so I'm 100% okay with this. There is sort of that weird loneliness to Oyama, right? I mean, I think one thing they showed us really well is they're they're very consistent with the friendships, and I haven't like done the best job paying attention to it, but I'm at least aware of the fact that if you're really paying attention, there's like this web of friendships that have formed, and I can't off the top of my head think of where Oyama fits in that. And the cheese thing sort of fits with that, right? Because it's kind of an awkward awkward gesture, but there's a sweetness to it. It's like some weird imagination of of what sweet gestures towards friendship would be but it comes across as jerky and weird until you get it. It's like, oh, okay, he's just reaching out in a way that he knows how. And actually I think one of Deku's best qualities is that he's really accepting as a person. He's really unjudgmental and he's able to sort of see at the, the core of people. And it's not like being friends with Ayama doesn't have its clear benefits. I mean, you get to eat all that, that cheese. He has a cheese for every occasion, which is also really sweet when you think about it. Like, I get it, you know, Ayama thinking to himself, how do I bridge this gap? You know, how do I be friends with someone that I like? I have to offer something. I have to offer something tangible. What can I offer? Well, I got all this cheese. But then for the recipient, it's sort of like, did I need this cheese? Did I need this gift? I would have been happy to like hang out without it. But I think that's just some people's way of navigating a feeling of having to have something to offer in an exchange and, and not seeing that what they offer is often something intangible. And it's just their personality. This is an interesting episode. It feels like there's a bunch of things they're trying to do that were not big enough for their own episode that kind of fit nicely together. There's the group of four that fought the children in their own reflections, as well as Endeavor seeming to, to turn a, a huge corner. And I think those two things are related because they're both about letting go a little bit and easing up up sort of on one's ambitions and how that leads to blind spots in the way they treat others and also in the way they are missing sort of fundamental lessons they need for themselves. I mean, it's no easy thing, you know, it's sort of really easy to turn a critical lens on the world. It's very, very challenging to turn that critical lens on oneself in a way that's productive. And then on top of that, sort of the, the Ayama debut, it feels like in a way. Ayama like pushing his way back into the spotlight. It's funny, so far in this post overhaul arc, I feel like I've, I've come home a little bit. It's nice to get back to this sort of warmth this character warmth and reflection because the overhaul arc was just so, so intense and over the top. And underneath it all, I feel like, as usual in My Hero Academia, nothing is wasted. This is going to be set up for something really cool. So looking forward to seeing where it goes. And I'll see you next time when I almost saves the world for cheese.